Hola guys! Welcome to my kitchen once again. It's Saturday afternoon and it looks like a rainstorm is blowing in. Yay! At least we're not at the beach like last weekend when it poured down on us, but I like the rain and uh, it just makes me feel more comfy in the kitchen cooking and it is about dinner time. So I was going to get in here and get some stuff ready. And then I remembered that some of you guys have uh, requested and have been asking when my next cooking video will be. So I thought I'm making something pretty simple tonight, but might interest some of you guys. So um, I thought I'd bring you guys in. For those of you who have been asking or like cooking videos, tonight we are preparing me and my little sous chef in here. Hold on, booger. We are going to make a pollo guisado con arroz. It's stewed chicken over rice um and then i have a dessert for you guys uh that i couldn't resist getting this stuff for uh at the grocery store well i only bought a fruit at the grocery store because i already had uh one part of it but i'll show you guys the dessert also very mexican uh but for right now let me just show you the ingredients that are going to go into the chicken with rice hold on before I get started, uh, my little sous chef here wants to show you what we picked up today. I did go run in and out of the uh, 99 cent only store and he found, what'd you find? Uh, uh, what are you holding? Uh, a horn. horn. A horn? Make it. Goes like this. <laughs> Woohoo! Awesome! Okay, kiddo, now we're going to show him what we're going to make for dinner, okay? Okay. <laughs> this is what you guys will need. Focus. This is what you guys will need for the pollo guisado, the stewed chicken. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, sorry about that. I had to try and get this thing in focus. Uh, chicken thighs, you can use any kind of chicken you want. You can use chicken legs. I've done it with chicken wings, and it tastes really good with chicken wings. But you have to make a whole lot of chicken wings to feed this house. But, um... I prefer thighs because of the flavor and you just get more meat on them. Uh, I grabbed a four or five pack. I'm not even sure how many is in here. A whole onion, four cans of tomato sauce. And the reason I use four cans is because I want a lot of the stew sauce left over. Because what I generally do is when I make this the next morning, I will make my version of huevos rancheros. And I will use some of the sauce on top of the eggs. And if you guys are interested in that breakfast thingy i can show you guys too uh we need some jalapenos to taste i'm probably only going to use two some cilantro uh, a little bit of veggie oil some white rice some uh sazon i like this it has all the little ingredients to make this chicken taste good it's badia brand um for um serving uh, an avocado and some lime and some corn tortillas i wanted my Haas avocados but i couldn't find any that were ripe so i picked up this big giant california i mean this big giant florida avocado uh, which i like but they're kind of expensive so anywho these are the ingredients that you're gonna need for a very simple yet very filling uh just um, comfort food, dian dian. For the dessert part, um, I am going to do, it's kind of a Mexican strawberry shortcake-esque kind of thing. Um, I got some um, pound cake. Uh, this is the Mexican variety they make in the bakery at my grocery store. It's called panque in Spanish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, get a, make a puree of these uh, prickly pears. These are the actual little pears that sit on top of the cactus. Any cactus, any roadside cactus you guys see anywhere between Texas and California. You may notice they have these little balls on top. You can, <laughs> you can eat these, can't you, baby? Yeah. No, not like that. We got to peel them. Put them back, silly. Uh, this is the prickly pear. And in Spanish, they're called tunas. Uh, not tuna like the fish, but tuna. Uh, in Spanish, tuna is atun. Yeah, baby, we took the thorns out. Uh, these already came de-thorned, de-spiked. De um, 
the thorns cut you yeah they do they will cut you if you're not careful but my grocery store had these already um de de prickly fried if that's a word but anyway all i'm gonna do is i'm going to slice them and put them through a sieve so i can just get the awesome little pulp because there's teeny tiny little seeds in here and some people in my family eat the seeds i don't like them i don't even think they're edible but they will still eat them all i'm gonna do is peel them put them through a sieve get the puree and pour it over a slice of pound cake so that's going to be dessert and i love these and i hadn't seen any that were ripe and ready because i really wasn't looking for them so when i found them woohoo yes yes look at me y'all remember when i tried to paint that fingernail goodness gracious anyway thumbs up on this luscious dessert so let's get the main course started Okay, fellers, I have just rinsed my chicken and I am going to trim off the skin and any gnarly, nasty little bits of fat. I sometimes cook it with the skin, but because it's going to be like in a little stew, a little stew uh, gravy kind of thing, uh, the skin won't stay crispy. Uh, and that kind of, I don't like that. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and take the skin off and trim off some of this ooky fat and then season it up. And there are five small pieces of chicken. Um, I have been in the mood for some food food ever since my little guy, my big guy, has been on the bland and non-spicy diet. Um, I've kind of been eating what he's been eating. And uh, I'm in the mood for some food. So um, this is a bit spicy, but he has been able to tolerate a little more of our normal diet. So hopefully, this doesn't hurt his mouth situation but um let me just trim this off real quick and then i will season it with the badia so be right back Pretty pot. oh yeah it is chicken but don't touch it because i don't want your little hands to get gross are you gonna help me Yep, okay, see, we just cut it off. Don't cut yourself. I won't cut myself. We're you cutting all the nasty fat off. If you cut yourself, your finger's going to get all bloody. I know, that would be disgusting. I'll be right there, Papas. All right, so I've trimmed off all the skin and fat. Whoa, they almost lit off the platter. And I am now going to season the bird with the badia. I lost my towel, guys. Here it is. Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi. I'm gonna just sprinkle season. And I liberally season it. See? I cover it. Because I like the tomato sauce and everything, but I don't just want it to taste like tomato sauce. I want it to have other flavors too. So I like to really sprinkle the seasoning on it. And then I stick it in a hot skillet with a few tablespoons of oil. And I let it go. I do it separate. While the chicken is um, searing up in the skillet, I then start my sauce. So let's hit the skillets. Okie doke. So now. We're going to put the thighs in, bone side down, skillet with a little bit of oil. I hope they put in there, yeah. And I'm going to leave these be while I go. Uh, Not A, B, sweetheart. I'm going to leave them be. Uh, B. I'm going to leave those alone uh, while. We chop our veg in them a bowls. Let's see, where do I put you guys for the vegetable of it all? Glass in there. Yeah, leave it in there so it doesn't get wilty. All right, guys. Uh, me and sous chef here are about to chop up the veggies. I'm going to do a whole onion because I like a lot of onion. There's a button. There's a button. A button knife. Yeah, Daddy, cut the onion. Okay, we'll get back over here in your spot. 
I like a lot of onion because, like I said, a lot, some of the sauce is going to be used for huevos rancheros tomorrow morning. And um, I like the circles of onion in the sauce. I think it's awesome. So if you don't like a lot of onion, you don't have to use the whole onion, but I use a small to medium mm -hmm. onion. All I, I'm going to need those sweetie pies, so don't, get, don't lose them. What I do, I cut them in rings. That's all I'm going to do. I need those for the chile, baby. Here. You're going to get stinky hands. But you can play around with that one. Cut that one, sweetie. Yeah, you're going to get stinky hands. Um, I just cut rings. Let me separate them because I might be talking out my head. I cook visually. Like, I know how much is enough by... What it looks like so let me pull the rings apart no 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 don't do that mommy needs those for the chile um i don't want to get chile on my hands baby so it might be enough mm, i may go just do the whole onion um i love chicken and onion and tomato sauce and this is a tomato base that i use in a lot of my cooking whether i'm cooking seafood or pork or chicken I tend to gravitate towards this, but a lot of Mexican food does. So, this is like staple ingredients. These are staple. Ah, these are staple ingredients we have in the house all the time. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole onion. I'm not cutting it very pretty. This isn't gonna be a full circle. Lord help me, I don't want. Did y'all see that? It went right at y'all. I don't want to have any accidents on camera, so. He's singing. The singing chef. You're going to cut him up? Cut him up with that butter knife. Cut him up. Uh, what about a sharp knife? No, sir. You're not going to get a sharp knife. Okay. So these are my onions. I didn't use the entire, entire one, but that's it. All right, kiddo. This is where you're going to have to be a little careful because Mama's about to get in the chile. I don't know. Where's the other bag, sweetie? What? what? I have two bags. Where'd the other one go? Uh oh, hold on, guys. Uh -oh. All right, guys, we found it. I hate to work with chiles without my hands covered because I can never get the chile off. So don't touch these, okay, baby? Do not touch those. So all I'm doing is. Sorry about the crinkle, guys. I hate He does not hate our house, guys. He Don't touch these, baby, at all, okay? He is quoting. No, 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 sweetie. He is quoting uh, Ice Age. In case y'all are wondering, why does he hate home? He doesn't hate home. Um, I'm going to take the seeds out because I don't like it super, super hot. So I'm just going to de-seed them. Woo, goodness gracious. What? The onion and the chile together. Mm-mm. It's working my eyeballs. Yeah, I'm gonna de-seed them. I usually have, I used to have a little box of latex gloves in the kitchen just for working with chile. And I don't know what happened to them. Um, I may have used them to clean the bathroom, I'm not sure. But there we go. Um, see, I've de-seeded them. Now I'm just gonna chop them into half moons. And that will be the chile of it all. Now, I don't mind chopping them without gloves, but de-seeding them without gloves, oh my gosh. That, that leaves horrible, horrible oil on my hands. Let's uh, turn the chicken, hold on. Okay, I had to flip the chicken over. It was smelling delicious and it has a nice, brown um has a nice brown um, sear on it uh once again i'm always scared about how much chile i use because some jalapenos are hotter than others for some reason and i'm beginning to visually get nervous about the amount of chile this is so a few more rings and i think i'm gonna call it a day 
on the jalapeno. Next is the cilantro. Next comes the cilantro and no, I, no, 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 no. I washed it and I leave it in a glass like a little flower. I change the water out every like second day and this is how I keep it fresh in the refrigerator. Some people will put it... I got a choice. No, it's very strong baby. Some people will wrap it in a wet paper towel and then put it in a freezer bag which works just as fine to sit in your refrigerator but this is how i was raised doing it so that's how i do it all i do is cut off a hunk it has been washed i washed it before i set up and i use the stems and everything some people are real particular and will just pick off the leaves honey i don't have time for that no 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 i'm not chewing that for you I don't think you'd like it raw, sweetie pie. You gotta cook it. Anywho, chop it, baby. Chop it. Uh, Get in there. Chop uh, it. Chop uh, it. Uh, uh, don't sprinkle it everywhere. But coarse chop. Um, because I'm making a lot of sauce. Hold on, sweetie pie. I'm gonna cut off a little bit more. And chop that up too. If you guys watched my um fish soup the caldo uh cooking video um you saw me do the same exact thing with that this is a base that i use <laughs> you okay that's how to do it you just tasted it it's very strong isn't it hey can i chew this thing for I'm me i'm not chewing that for you he just tasted raw cilantro and i don't think y'all captured his face that was hilarious okay so I'm about to put this in the skillet and we'll see you in a bit. Hi. Hey, Jesus gave me from it. Okay guys, um I'm about to dump the veggies in the oil. But uh there's the chicken of it all. I lost my little Hold on guys. Hey, Jesus hey, yeah. gave I'm not chewing that thing for you. Um hey, here is the chicken. And see how it's all nice and brown and toasty and delicious. Um, I've got both sides um, browning. It is browning pretty good. I'm going to leave it there for a little longer. I don't want to cook it all the way through because I set it in the stew part for another half hour just to make sure it's really, really cooked and almost falling off the bone. Um, but I definitely want to get the process started. As you can tell, ew, um, it is cooking through. So let me flip it over one more time and I'll get to the veggies. But yeah, I'm cooking this on medium, medium high heat for about 20 minutes before I put it in the stew sauce. So we're about to dump. I got a pot of pintos on, guys, because tomorrow. When I make the huevos rancheros, I use beans for it. Y'all will check that out too. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for you guys. And if y'all are interested, y'all watch. Uh, but y'all will see how I use my beans. I didn't put them on in time for dinner, but uh, they'll be ready for tomorrow. So, all I do now is dump all this lusciousness into the pot and cook it down. One thing I did forget to tell you guys I'm going to put in is a can of diced tomatoes. I totally forgot to add this in the beginning when I showed you guys what we put in there. But uh, I let this cook down some. And right before I put in the cans of tomato sauce, I put in my diced tomatoes. And that will be the base. So I'll show you guys that here in a little bit. Alright guys, I have since added the can of tomatoes. And I set it up a little higher just to get... Um, the veggies see it's starting to boil a little bit just to get the veggies soft especially the jalapeno because i don't like to bite into a crunchy jalapeno with this dish but what i'll do now is pour in the four cans of tomato sauce now you really have to like tomato sauce or tomato based recipes to enjoy this and we do so like i said i'm making so much of it because i'm going to use the sauce for another recipe so it's like killing two birds with one stone uh, now what I'm gonna do is add a can 
of tomato sauce. I mean, the water. I rinse out the cans. My goodness gracious. I'm making things difficult. Um, I rinse out the cans because I want to get all the tomato -y goodness out of them. This is how I do it. You guys might have another way, but this keeps me from running back and forth to the sink. Uh, and if I don't add the water, then it's really, really thick and it tends to cook down too, too much. And I want some extra. What, baby? I'll find it, sweetie. It's in the, one of the grocery bags. So there is our stew. That is the stew. I'm going to stir that up. The chicken has been cooking. It's nice and seared and brown. And the, the badilla um, seasoning is nice and crusted on it. So now what we do, we nestle it in the stew. That's what mama does. Got my rice on. Because all we do is... Um, Serve this over rice, white rice. And the reason I make just plain white rice is because the, the little stewy stuff is already seasoned and yummy that we don't need to put anything else over it. A little salt, a little pepper. But it's very basic, very simple recipe. And it is stick to your ribs, home cooking, something I grew up with, something I've been feeding my kids. So while this is... um simmering i'm gonna let it simmer for about 25 30 minutes because i love it when you pull out the chicken and some of the bone falls off it just makes fun eating while this is simmering i'm gonna walk you through a really quick dessert hold on okay guys now um it's just about ready what i'm gonna do now is heat up some tortillas uh corn tortillas on my comal I told you guys this comal has been passed down from my grandma to my mom, from my mom to me. And if my little sous chef or my big boy want it later on, they can have it since I didn't have any little girls. But this is what I'm doing. Um, I serve this with corn tortillas. I prefer corn. Uh, some in my family like it with flour. I don't like flour in like a stew because it gets soggy and gross and I, 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 I don't do that. Um, so I prefer corn, and then any tomato-based dish that I make, I slather in lime juice. So I've gone ahead and sliced up one, just one, because um, I don't want to cut both and I don't use them. The avocados that I bought at almost $2 an avocado have disappointed me immensely. Um, let me show you guys. That's disgusting. Um, and I know you should buy the greener ones, but the green ones in the Florida were really, really hard. Uh, so this is what I get for buying speckled ones. My bad. Uh, I'll just do without avocado. It's not the biggest deal in the world. As long as I have my lime and my tortillas, we're good to go. So I will see you guys when I... Uh, Played it. Also, I swear every time I do one of these videos, I'm not very comfortable. I need to find a better angle. Anyway, every time I do one of these videos, I forget the same ingredient. The last time, probably the last two times, I forget the same ingredient. That ingredient is a cube of the nor. This is the caldo de pollo flavor. I add one cube. When I put in the tomato sauce, I crumble in a cube of the nor. I forget this ingredient all the time. Um, I've added it in since. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know so y'all get the real deal experience. You see how they're nice and toasty brown? That's how you want them. And um, I'll put on a few more and I'll plate it and show you guys. Okay, hold on. Okie doke, there is our white rice. We are going to plop down a hunk of chicken. And we are going to 
spoon, lots o, this sauce on top, because that's what makes it good. Oops, I have a runaway onion. And you just let the sauce soak into the rice. And that is, focus, that is, <laughs> it looks like a big mound of onion. That is pollo guisado with rice and finishing touch are a few corn tortillas on the plate to sop up the graviness and a squeeze of lime lots of lime as y'all can see i really really like it and that is dinner simple um fresh ingredients with the exception of that crazy avocado um everything is easy to buy and inexpensive and quick to make and if you guys try it i hope you guys enjoy it um buen provecho that means good eating y'all um and next i will plate up the dessert but this is dinner we're gonna sit down and chow okay guys here is the tuna not tuna like the fish tuna spelled the same t-u-n-a um if you find them in your grocery store uh make sure that they have the little pricklies taken off of them because them suckers are like microscopic and they will stay in your skin forever all i do is i i wash them don't freak I cut the booty. Look at that color. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, and the smell is so. Mm -mm -mm. It's like a sugar beet. Cut the booty in the top. And then I split. And then I stick my knife in. And pull it off. Now, see, this one is so ripe and delicious, it's just going to come right off. See? Just peel off. And I'm going to place them in a bowl. I'm so glad I'm not allergic to these because I really, really like them. So, slit. Oops. One little slit happy. And roll out. These are very, very ripe. But it's still, even as ripe as they are, it's still working. Don't worry about them falling apart because you're going to put them through a sieve. Because... There are so many little seeds in there. Um, I think I'm only going to use three. I'm going to use, because my oldest doesn't like this stuff. My little one, y'all know, we're just trying to get him to eat new things. So I don't want to use all of them and they end up ruining. See, this one's perfect. See? Uh, you end up with your husk, your skin, you toss it. Uh, because this one was kind of perfect. I'm going to chop it up. If you can see, see the little seeds? And like I said, some of my family members and friends, they eat them. I don't like fighting with them. They're hard. So that's all we're going to do. I'm going to put them in there, discard the peels, and then I'll walk you through the next step. The next step is, well, I guess I shouldn't have put them in there. The next step is the fun step. You get your little colander, stick it in the bowl. Put your fruit in there, okay? Put your fruit in and mush. Use your hands. You can use a spoon. You can use whatever. I might use a spoon. Hold on, guys. These can stain. So all you do is, well, I'm trying to show you guys. All you do is mush. They're very, they're very soft and very ripe. So all you do is mush through the sieve. And all that's going to do is keep the seeds out. But let that nice little pulpy awesomeness of the actual fruit through. So I'm going to do that. And then show you guys the final result. Hold on. 
Okay, I wanted to get a better angle so you guys could see what I'm doing and how easy it is. So I'm just smushing it. And it takes a while because there are lots of little seeds in there. And depending on how many you're using, you're just smashing. You see how the pulp is coming down? And that is just, it ends up being like, if you freeze it, guys, it ends up like sorbet. I kid you not. Stick it in the freezer and every now and then kind of a rake a fork across it. It's like friggin' sorbet. It's awesome. But yeah, that's all we're doing. Just mush and see. Very simple. Very, very simple. And all you're going to do at the end to serve it is pour it on top of your pound cake. Your pound cake. Now, I was at a grocery store that, um, it's like a Mexican grocery store. So that's how come I got, I think that's how come I found the tunas. Because the tunas, unless you want to pay an arm and a leg for them, like at your regular chain, like Kroger or whatever. Your best bet to get them cheaper and really ripe and in season is to go to a Mexican catered store. I know, but trust me. Um, and then if you come across something that you don't know about, somebody there will help you. I helped a guy today pick out um, a nectar. They sell these um, guava nectars and pineapple nectars and stuff. I think I've shown you guys that I've hauled the pineapple one and stuff. Um, and he wanted to try them and he wasn't sure which one. So I steered him. Of course, I steered him toward the pineapple because that's my favorite. But yeah, I mean, we'll help you figure something out if you're not familiar with what the heck is going on there. Okay. But see, I ended up from three fruits to pretty much just seed. So, um, I will see you guys when I played up the dinner and when I played up the dessert. Are y'all having fun? I hope so. I like these videos. I have fun doing this. Anywho, I'll be right with you. I'll be right back to you guys. Pause. Hi guys, it is dessert time. So here we are with the panque, the um, pound cake. Uh, here are the little preserves. That's what I call it. It reminds me of like preserves, like when you're going to make a jelly or can some stuff. Um, that's what's left of the tuna. And I'm going to serve it this time with some vanilla ice cream. Sometimes I'll do it with just whipped cream and the little preserves. Uh, but because it's been like really, really hot, I'm going to drizzle it over the ice cream. Plus, um, the fruit itself is not very sweet at all. It's very fresh. It smells like a berry. It kind of smells like grapes. Like when you uh, slice open a grape and you get that fresh smell like, like just... A little berry smell not very sweet at all so if you guys want to drizzle the preserve on top of anything really I would recommend a tablespoon of sugar of white sugar and stir it up uh, because it is it's very very mild it's real fresh tasting but it's very mild not sweet at all so it goes real good with ice cream or whipped cream and I'm gonna serve it up with ice cream because I had some and because I like um, how the ice cream and the tuna mix so i'm gonna put it together and y'all will watch how it comes into a dessert how it turns into a dessert hold on okie dokie so we are gonna get our big hunk of pound cake and i've bought pound cake <laughs> from these folks for years um and it is very thick. See? <laughs> it's very thick. So what I do is I cut it down the middle. So I have two slices. I smear. I put some of the tuna yumminess on it. Uh, the tuna preserve has been chilling in the refrigerator while we eat. See? Then I get a little scoop of ice cream. I'm not big on ice cream. I never have been. I know. Call me crazy. But um, I just do a little dollop of it. And squeeze. 
squish sandwich it you don't have to sandwich if your your thingy isn't so um thick but that bakery makes it really really thick and then i finish it off with some more of the tuna drizzle and it ain't pretty but it's good that's what it is very simple very yummy and there is dessert <laughs> i said it ain't pretty but it's good and for when it's hot outside it really really works so again if y'all try it and y'all like it uh buen provecho good eating y'all thanks for watching i hope y'all enjoyed it because i had a blast in my kitchen with y'all Bye bye